Welcome everyone to the Judiciary Committee hearing this Thursday morning. Um, if we have a catastrophic crash on the Zoom side, we will try again tomorrow at 9.46 a.m. in this room 016, that'll be March 15. Uh, I'm going to, oh, and we do have a two minute time limit on testimony, either in Zoom or in person, so the, it, when you get to two minutes, if you could stop at that point. Um, I'm gonna take one item out of order here. Um, I'm gonna take the last one first, which is HB 2340. This is making appropriations for claims against the state. It's the one bill on the agenda that has to make a lateral uh, next week. So I'd like to be sure we get to it since the rest of the agenda is pretty busy. So on HB 2340, the first testifier is Skylar Cruz, Deputy Attorney General. Good morning. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Skylar Cruz. Deputy Attorney General from the Department of the Attorney General. As you know, this is the appropriations bill for claims against the state, its agencies, and employees. This bill contains 29 claims. Those claims are described in our attachment A. Since the bill was introduced, there have been seven new claims, and those claims are described in our attachment B. With the new claims, there are a total of 36 claims for a total amount of 15 million $167,302.37. We ask that this bill be passed with the amendments as referenced in our written testimony, and I'm happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Great, thank you very much. Uh, next is Ed Sniffen, Director of Department of Transportation and Support. Next is Tommy Johnson, Director of Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, uh, also in support. That's everybody who signed up to testify in HB 2340. Would anyone else like to testify in HB 2340? Okay, if not, members' questions? Let's see if I have any here. Okay. Uh, I guess I do have one qu question for Mr. Cruz. So, the uh, the, this is the House bill, of course. The House added the numbers that you gave. The House added a couple of claims as well. Is that correct? That is correct. How, how many did they add? Uh, I believe it was a total of uh, three. So it started out with 29, they added three, and then we're adding, you want us to add seven more. And, and pardon me. Um, might have been two, actually. Okay, I will look it up. I just wanted to be sure that the seven, you, the, the seven you're talking about that's in your attachment B, that's the additional claims after it left the house. Yeah, so so uh, that's correct, uh, Chair. So the seven uh, claims that are in attachment B today are the new claims since the claims that were added by the house in the previous okay. versions. Okay, just wanted to clarify that. All right, thanks very much. Uh, members, other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, members, let's go ahead and vote on this one now since we, uh, I, I just, this, the rest of the agenda may take a while. So let's go ahead and vote on HB 2340. The last one, the settlements. Okay. Um, any questions or concerns? Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't give you the recommendation yet. The recommendation is to go ahead and add the, um, to include the amendments that JDC, JDC made to SB 30. 29, which was amending the repayment requirements for the settlement in the case of Courtney Ledford versus Ethan Ferguson and the Third Circuit by changing the amount appropriated to the Department of the Attorney General for the settlement of the claim from 1.25 million to 750,000 and requiring that the remaining 500,000 of the claim settlement be equally apportioned and paid from the available general funds appropriated by Act 164, Session Laws of Hawaii 2023 to the Department of Land and Natural Resources and I'm sorry, Department of Human Resources Development and the Department of Land and Natural Resources will amend the payment requirements for the settlement in the case of Lynette Reyes versus Tanaka, um, changing the amount appropriated to the Department of the Attorney General for the settlement of the claim from 2 million to 1.2 million and requiring that the remaining 800,000 of the claim settlement be paid from the available general funds appropriated by Act 164, Session, session Laws of Hawaii 2023, the Department of Public Safety slash Corrections and Adult Rehabilitation. And then we'll add the seven additional claims identified within the Attorney General's testimony for a total of, uh, their total was 1.758 million and change. And we'll go ahead and make it effective on um, July 1st, 2024. Questions, concerns? 
If not, Senator Gower for the vote. Chair's recommendation is to pass HB 2340 with amendments. Chair Rhodes. Aye. Vice Chair Rhodes. Aye. Senator Elefante. Aye. Senator San Buenaventura. Aye. And Senator Awa is excused. Measure passes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we will go ahead and move on to the top of the agenda. Uh, this will be HB 1541 related to Suicide Prevention and Awareness Month. This is really a housekeeping measure that just makes the current law on Suicide and Prevention and Awareness Month uh, effective sooner. Uh, first up on this is the Department of Health on Zoom, maybe. They're unavailable on Zoom, Chair. They support it. Dara Carlin supports it. Any, uh, that's it. We, that's all the written testimony we have on HB 1541. Does anyone else wish to testify on HB 1541? Okay, seeing none. Um, members, questions? Okay, I don't have any either. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, HB 1580. Now, this amends the criminal penalties for various animal cruelty offenses by increasing the category of offense. A uh, whole long list of what which ones are upgraded. Uh, first up on HB fifteen eighty is William Bento, Office of the Public Defender. Good morning. Good morning, morning Chair Rhodes, Vice Chair Gabbard, members of the committee. My name is William Bento. I'm an attorney with the Public Defender's Office. Uh, the Public Defender's Office does oppose this measure, and we want people to understand the it's not because we support any form of animal <coughs> cruelty. As we stated in our written testimony, we believe that some of the proposed penalties are much too harsh for the offenses that are listed. Um, we're talking about punishments of 10 or 20 years of incarceration. I just want to point out that um, for someone to be serving such a punishment, uh, it means that basically the state of Hawaii pays for that person's uh, room and board for that period of time. These sentences are usually reserved for the most serious of the criminal offenses that we have on the books. Um, and to set these types of penalties for these types of crimes um, equates that with those types of other offenses. But again, that value judgment is not for me or uh, anybody in my office. It's for the legislature uh, to make. We do feel that a uh, penalty system that would start off at a lower level and move up for subsequent offenses or repeated offenses would be uh, a better way to help change the attitude in the community as to how we treat uh, animals. And so we could start off with a misdemeanor and make it a class C or a class B felony for elevated or subsequent offenses. We believe that would be a better approach and would allow for courts to shape probationary terms and conditions to help change the attitude. I just wanna point out that right now, I don't believe the Department of Public Safety and the Corrections Division and the Hawaii Paroling Authority would be set up to be able to provide that type of level of treatment. Thank, thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, next up is uh, Kirby Shaw, Executive Director for Dis Disability and Communication Access Board. Uh, in support, next is Michael Vincent, Deputy Director of Administration for the Department of Law Enforcement. Also in support, next is Trisha Nakamatsu, Deputy Attorney General. Good morning. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Deputy, uh, Deputy Attorney General Trisha Nakamatsu appearing on behalf of the Department of the Attorney General. Uh, we uh, just provided comments on this bill. We're not seeing a position on the overall intent of the bill. We understand that increasing the penalties would provide a greater deterrent. Our concern is more of a technical nature. It's in section three, starting in the middle of page two. Animal cruelty in the second degree, section 711-1109, uh, subsection four is the penalties subsection. Our concern is that it lumps together the, uh, I believe it's a, a misdemeanor as well as a class C felony into one section, uh, into one subsection. And it would of course increase to a class B felony and that's that's not our concern. Um, our concern is that by lumping them together in the same subsection, it doesn't make it harder for us to enforce or prosecute per se. The difficulty comes later when we get requests for data reports, um, tracking historical 
data, things of that nature. Um, what happens is when the courts and agencies input these offenses by a section number, they don't always put the subsection. So we don't know, um, it's hard for us to discern. And over the years, surely all of you are very experienced legislators, you heard um, the agencies respond, we can provide you the data, but it's very complicated. It will require a hand count. It will take us some time. And this is one of the reasons for that, is that if the subsection is not listed, then we don't know whether we're talking about the misdemeanor or the class C felony version of that offense. Um, also, even when the subsection is provided, the subsections change over years as legislation is passed, um, added or introduced, and that will change the subsection. So then we need to go and look and see what subsections we're talking about. So just as a matter of practice, we would highly recommend that the, at the very least, they be separated out to different subsections, ideally to different sections. But in this case, we didn't feel like that was uh, practical, so okay. subsections. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Brooks, Brooks Bear for Honolulu Department of the Prosecuting Attorney and support Stephanie Kendrick, Director of Community Engagement, Hawaiian Humane Society. Good morning. Aloha Chair Rhodes, Vice Chair Gabbard, committee members, Stephanie Kendrick for the Hawaiian Humane Society. We're in strong support of this measure. Uh, to the public defender's points, you know, the courts would still have enormous discretion on how they actually sentence these cases. And this is a people issue as well as an animal issue. There are decades worth of evidence that people who commit animal cruelty crimes are a threat to vulnerable human populations. And so it is really important that both our court system, our criminal justice system, and our community take these crimes seriously. And we be believe that this bill is a step in the right direction. Unfortunately, our field services manager couldn't join me today, but I wanted to share with you from his testimony a number of examples from recent years of the lack of seriousness with which these cases are treated now. James Montgomery, a serial puppy mill uh, animal abuser, was convicted in 2006 in a case involving more than 150 dogs. He was sentenced to nine, he was convicted again, excuse me, in 2017. He did no jail time in the first case. In the second case, uh, he was convicted of animal cruelty first for abusing 33 animals and killing one. He was sentenced to nine months in jail. He completed probation and he can now own animals again. Heather Maynard's dogs were found after a 100 foot fall off the Canna Point Trail in which she did absolutely nothing to try and rescue the animals. One of them died at the scene, the other one died later from its injuries after they were found by hikers who found them several hours later. She pleaded no contest to two counts of animal cruelty second and two counts of desertion, which should be a class B C felony. She was sentenced to 24 hours of community service and a $400 fine for actions that resulted in the death of two animals. In the largest animal rescue in Hawaiian humane history, which involved 330 dogs and eight small mammals seized from absolutely atrocious conditions at a Waianae property where animals were forced to live in crates with their deceased siblings, thank, thank you very much. there's been no prison time served. Thank you. Next is Marion Hussenbucks for the Animal Interfaith Alliance in Britain in support. Uh, next is Chantel Moniz for Hina. Hina's Legacy Rescue Foundation on Zoom, maybe? Oh, you're here. Come on. Come on up. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, I was able to make it up. Um, I was able to make it this hang on, morning. Hang on. Um, can you just pull the mic a little closer to you? Sure. Thanks. Can you hear me? I, it's, it's, I can hear you. It's the people in the oh, back yeah. of the room. <laughs> yeah, it's on. Okay. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> My name is Chantel Moniz. I am the president of Hina's Legacy Rescue Foundation. And I'm mainly here for this bill um, for animal cruelty. I am the only rescue on the island that really focuses on animal cruelty because I'm the one that deals with the most worst cases, um, not including humane society, obviously. <clears throat> I've, over the years, uh, rescued many dogs, but recently we've been having a really large uptick in animal cruelty, um, dogs found dead, shot, stabbed. Um, I, I do support this bill because I feel like if we are able to increase the penalties, 
all the all that the uh, public defender's office was stating about increasing jail time to 20 years, 30 years, whatever it may be. <clears throat> Those crimes that everybody is being sentenced for today has nothing to do with animal cruelty, nothing at all. But with research, it shows that animal cruelty is a start, a lot of the times, the start of those crimes happening. So if we can try and get things taken care of earlier on hand, then maybe somebody wouldn't get hurt. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Tiffany Kim for Fur Angel Foundation and support. Next is Inga Gibson for Animal Welfare Institute. Good morning. Good morning, Chair. Committee members, Inga Gibson, Animal Welfare Institute, in strong support. And I did just want to mention that uh, in the House Judiciary Committee, we had suggested some recommendations to keep uh, the misdemeanor for the lesser offenses, which is included in the bill before you. So we appreciate that there are those cases that would not necessarily warrant a felony. So it does retain the misdemeanor penalties under 711-1109. Um, as you all know, um, we have had a felony for certain most egregious intentional cases of animal cruelty since 2007. I worked on that bill, and then we added equines to that in 2008. So we're not, um, when it comes to first degree, proposing a, a new felony. It's just increasing the penalties, obviously, from a Class C to a Class B felony. Um, there are, it is so difficult to bring these cases forward, to gather the evidence, to get witnesses, um, very few cases actually go to prosecution. They're often pleaded down or dismissed. Um, we do, you know, our jails, we need criminal justice reform. I'm the first to say that, but um, our jail issue um, is not to do with animal cruelty offenders taking up cell space at all. Um, actually, we could probably better address the violence in our communities if we do target animal cruelty, especially committed by adolescents and those who ultimately move on to violence against people. Uh, we do support the recommendations by the Attorney General's office to clarify uh, the offenses. And I did just want to point out um, a few other amendments, sorry, that we made from the initial draft. Um, we did remove some of the increased penalties for certain offenses that didn't involve intent knowingly, the higher mens rea. Um, but for example, animal sexual abuse right now is only a misdemeanor. We believe it should be a class C felony, the same way that um, very egregious animal offenses should be handled. So um, strong support, appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Franny Pueo for the Hui Pono Holo Holon uh, in support. Okay, I'm gonna run through a bunch of names real fast. If you're here and you wanna testify, please interrupt me. Scott Kidd in support, Lynn Mattisau in support, Sandy Wong in support, Roger Pavao in opposition, Justin No Last Name in opposition, Dwayne Lum in opposition, Wally Foster in support, Nandita Sharma in support, Natalie Graham Wood in support, Melanie Kim in support, Bonnie Galero in support, Willis Crozer in support, Moses Kau Ha'a Ha'a in opposition, Stephanie McLaughlin in support. Oh, I'm sorry. Which I'm one, sorry. Which one are you? Uh, I'm not on there. Oh, um, well, I'll get to you at the end then. Okay. So, so if you can just wait and. Okay, oh, sorry. They yeah, told me to come sorry. up. Sorry. Um, Stephanie McLaughlin in support, Carol Richelieu in support, Luke Nagasako in support, Renee Robb in support, Joan Parker in support, Ania Hazen with comments, Sheldon Cortez maybe is here in opposition, uh, Devin Ramos in opposition, DuPont in opposition, Glenn Kama Kagamida in support, and Forshi in support, Jennifer Chiwa in support, Johnny Kelly in support, Bryson Porter in opposition, Bill Dixon in support, Christina Hetz, Christiana Hetzel in support, Cannon Bonkel, Bonkel in opposition, Tiffany Medina in opposition, Janelle H in support, Sue Shell in support, Harold Hahn Jr. in support. That's everybody who signed up for HB 1580. And there was someone who, go ahead, come yeah, on, sorry. you can testify now. Sorry about that. Good morning. <clears throat> good morning. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Beth Broom, and I am a uh, veterinary technician of 18 years. Um, I currently work here 
um, in one of the busiest uh, ICU ERs on Oahu. And I'm here in support of this bill because unfortunately, I've spent the last 18 years seeing the victims of this when we, when we even get to see them alive. Um, I've seen dogs stabbed, beaten, um, burned, uh, shot recently, um, cats as well. And it's, you know, I understand that there is um, an uptick in this in the past year in the state of Hawaii, that there's been, I don't know the percentage, but there has been um, <clears throat> proof that we've seen more animal cruelty. Subsequently, as everyone has also mentioned, we have seen more crime lately that's against humans. We've seen more domestic violence. We've seen more um, acts that coincide with the type of people that are cruel to animals. We see, um, you know, way more violence happening around animal fighting. Um, and that all speaks to why we need to increase our penalties on this problem. I mean, it's, it's to hold an animal that's been beaten or abused by a human is tragic and unnecessary and in order for us to do something about it because apparently where we're at isn't isn't changing the problem um we need to have harsher penalties and unfortunately if that takes up space in our prison system i mean i think it's a deserved it's a deserved space um and hopefully a prevention for further crime uh, against our community members so all right, thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else, would anyone else like to testify on HB sorry, 1580? Sorry, jump in like that. Oh, okay, go ahead. Ms. Matson, go ahead. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee members, mahalo for this opportunity to testify. Um, I did not submit written testimony. Um, I just recently became aware of this bill, but I am testifying in strong support. My name is Shannon Matson. I'm from Hawaii Islands. I have adopted numerous uh, dogs and cats uh, um, throughout my life that were abused and or neglected in some way. And these animals became loving companions um, to me and my family for the rest of their lives. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to have done so. Um, and I really truly believe that those who harm animals um, intentionally must be held accountable. And this bill would help do that. Um, to respond briefly to the public vendors um, opposition. Uh, I believe that opportunities for harsher, harsher penalties do not mean that those have to be applied in every case, just in the most egregious of cases, and that it's important to include those options, um, especially when necessary, uh, based on the severity of the cases. So I'm asking you all please to vote in support, protect vulnerable creatures, mm -hmm. and help change our culture regarding the value um, the values and compassion with which we treat animals um, protect those who don't have a voice to advocate for themselves. Mahalo Nui. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, would anyone else like to testify on HB 1580? 1580. Okay, uh, members, questions? Uh, if not, uh, Inga Gibson, please. So you were mentioning, uh, it looks like just about everything on the list here is already a felony. But you were saying something had been left at misdemeanor. Sex assault for an animal was still a misdemeanor? Oh, I apologize. So the original um, uh, bill actually uh, proposed removing our second degree misdemeanor or, or to a felony. So oh, that's sorry, what oh. is retained here. That's what I was referring to. I'm sorry, which, which offense? So 711-1109. Um, um, excuse me, this is a page two, line 14, section three. Um, initially, the bill uh, suggested raising the second degree to a felony, and we testified that we would like to keep that as a misdemeanor. And then, oh, okay. um, but then, if so it, it was just nothing changed, then. exactly. I just okay. wanted to clarify that you know we're reasonable in um, understanding that there are some cases that only warrant the misdemeanor, and then, um, of course, if it re results in the death of the animal mm. or involves more than ten animals, then it would go to an increased penalty. Okay, so your, what, what's your response to, uh, or could you go over your response again to the public defender? Because yeah, know, most of the most of the charges here are already felonies. Correct, exactly, and um, I think Stephanie from Hawaiian Humane could testify to this, but I think we've only had one person actually go to jail within the last few years related to animal cruelty. I mean, that's the thing is that th these folks are getting you know fines um, or their cases are getting dismissed or pleaded out. We're not seeing jail time at all. So that's 
why increasing the penalties, of course. Even um, on repeat offenders. Correct, but the fact that these cases are so difficult to prosecute, rarely do we see repeat offenders because they're not getting caught the first time. That's the, that's the reason um, that we didn't propose, you know, penal penalties as we would maybe for other kinds of violations because the amount of resources needed from law enforcement, from animal control, uh, from the prosecutor's office, all law enforcement um, to investigate these cases is just so tremendous that, um, you know, the chance of, of catching a, a repeat offender is just, is just very, very low. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sympathetic, obviously. I've introduced a number of uh, anti-animal cruelty bills in my career, but yes, one thing I have learned as judiciary chair over the years is that it's getting caught that people find deterring. It's, if they don't think they're going to get caught, they don't really care what the penalty is. Right. Well, and um, obviously, as you know, um, the significance of this is the deterrence, because right now, even under the felony, you know, there's very few cases filed and very few cases that actually go to court. So with increased penalties where folks could potentially face significant jail time and significant fines, we believe that would be a greater deterrent. Okay. All right. Thank you. Other questions, members? Okay. Seeing none. Thanks very much. We'll go ahead and move Thank on you. to the next bill. Uh, next bill is HB 1879, provides that certain information be included in any digital voter information guide shall not be released to any requester in whole or in part before the publication, I'm sorry, before the public release of the entire guide. First up on 1879 is Scott Nago, Chief Elections Officer. In support, thank you. Next is Cheryl Kakazu Park, Director for Office of Information Practices on Zoom, maybe? They're unavailable on Zoom. Okay, with comments, uh, next is Scott Kidd in support. That's all the written testimony we have on HB 1879. Does anyone else wish to testify on HB 1879? Members, questions? Okay, I don't have any either. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which is HB 1880. This reschedules the post-election assembly of presidential electors to the first Tuesday after the second Wednesday in December next following their election first up on 1880 is scott nago chief election officer thank you uh that's the uh, mr nago is the only one who signed up for hb 1880 does anyone else wish to testify on hb 1880 okay seeing none members questions I don't have any either. Let's go ahead and move on to HB 1884. This is relating to standards of conduct, clarifies disclosure requirements for members of the legislature. First up on 1884 is Robert D. Harris, Executive Director for the Y State Ethics Commission. Hello, Madam Chair. Uh, on behalf of the Ethics Commission, we have a question. support. Okay, thank you. That's the only person who signed up for HB 1884. Does anyone else wish to testify on HB 1884? Okay, if not, members' questions? I don't have any either. Let's go ahead and move on to HB 1927. This is raises the criminal penalty for the offense of indecent exposure from a petty misdemeanor to a misdemeanor if the victim is less than 16 years of age. First up on HB 1927 is Albert Cook, Deputy Attorney General. Good morning. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. Um, I'm Deputy Attorney General Albert Cook from the Criminal Justice Division of the Department of Attorney General, and the department supports this bill. Basically, we, that we believe that intentionally exposing one's genitals to a child who's under 16 years um, deserves a higher penalty than doing so to those who are adults or who are over 16 years of age. And raising the penalty from a petty misdemeanor, which it currently is, to a full misdemeanor, um, we feel like would provide some, some deterrence and just uh, note the seriousness of this penalty. I'll be available for questions. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, William Bento, Office of Public Defender. Morning again. Good morning again. Uh, William Bento, Deputy Public Defender. Uh, our office does oppose this bill. Um, looking at the reasons for the bill, it would seem that um, the hope is to prevent people from targeting those that are mm -hmm. under the age of 16 for the crime of indecent exposure. 
But removing the state of mind kind of undercuts that because you're not then going after people that are targeting this group. Um, we would suggest uh, perhaps instead of strict liability, uh, a reckless state of mind wherein the person would uh, be charged with consciously disregarding the risk that the person was below the age of 16. And that's not difficult for the government to prove in these types of situations. Um, because if a person obviously is a young child or um, even a teenager, uh, if there's the conscious disregard that that person is below the age of 16, then the person is guilty. Our, our concern as expressed in our written testimony is that this is the type of wide net kind of situation and it doesn't allow for the types of innocent mistakes that people could make uh, wherein as i described persons changing clothes at the beach or using the bathroom where they shouldn't and somebody comes upon them they have no idea that the person is uh, a child and yet they're going to be guilty of this offense and so currently it's a petty misdemeanor we we think it should be left uh, in that form, uh, it answers, I think, a need in the community for this type of offense. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next is Daniel Hugo, uh, the Department of Prosecuting Attorney, in support. Next, we have Keldon Walgen, Prosecuting Attorney for uh, Hawaii County, in support. Bill Watts for Friends of Little Beach in opposition, Randy Gantz for American Association for New Recreation. Good morning. Hello, members. Uh, my name is Randy Gantz. I'm testing on behalf of ANR, uh, the American Association for New Recreation. ANR is a national organization with deep membership in Hawaii and across the nation. Um, ANR appreciates the intent of this measure as protecting our keiki is always in the best interest of the public. But we are opposing the bill at this time, uh, as we believe the bill is not yet ripe enough for passage, and there are many concerns about possible unintended consequences of the bill uh, with the current language. And after preliminary research, we believe that outweigh the possibility of the limited benefits uh, this bill intends to create. Uh, I have reached out to stakeholders, uh, such as the Kauai County prosecutors, and attempt to work on language that meets the intent um, to support protecting our keiki, uh, but at the time it's not as ripe as we'd like it to be. Uh, the Hawaii Supreme Court ruled in Hawaii versus Kalima that residents uh, participating in clothing optional sunbathing is protected mm -hmm. as long as individuals not likely to cause affront. While this can be up for interpretation, the new added language uh, to HRS 707-734, that interpretation can be applied much more broadly. Um, there are many family-friendly clothing optional beaches in Hawaii that residents have enjoyed uh, their civil rights in Hawaii for a long time. Even though this activity is not illegal, uh, not everyone agrees with it. Thus, NR has seen in other states with similar language that there are many instances of anti-nude radicals bringing their young children to places that they will likely encounter people who are uh, practicing clothing optional lifestyles such as beaches in order to register a complaint with the police. And also police are not usually well versed on uh, nudity laws and they tend to seem that these things are mostly illegal in public places this puts the residents not causing any harm in a very difficult position and can lead to them being charged with very serious crimes. Uh, so thus, the un unintended consequences at this time that have been brought up uh, here and in previous hearings, we do agree with uh, the previous testifier and other testifiers that are concerned. Uh, we hope to work on this measure and make sure it's right for the right time. So thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you very much. Next is Scott Kidd in support, Dara Carlin in support, David Pullman in opposition. So everybody who signed up on HB 1927, would anyone else like to testify on HB 1927? Okay, seeing none. Members, questions? Uh, yes. Senator Sam Boyan-Ventura. Attorney General. Um, so I'm looking at the testimony, and, and since there is a sort of nude beach in my district, I could see where the, um, which once in a while gets cleared by the police officers um, because the police officers claim that there's no such thing as a nude beach in the state of Hawaii. Okay. But 
the community believes it's a nude beach. Um, do you see the unintended consequence of the of kids being brought to this nude beach as then subjecting those who are already on the nude beach being subjected to a misdemeanor conviction, even though they're already there first? Yeah, I don't think so, because the way the statute reads is that it has to be displaying genitals in a manner likely to cause affront. Except and for, if you look at the other portion, the state of mind requirement is not applicable. That's to the age of the child, well, that's not, not to just the displaying of the genitals. Oh. So, oh, so, <laughs> so that should be interpreted to mean that it is, the intent is of the age of the child, that yes. the person does not need to intentionally know that the kid who is seeing it is under the age of 16. 16 is kind of young. It's kind of old. Okay. Yeah, that, that kind of traps with our other sex assault laws, you know, like for sex assault of them. Um, so, so that's rape, what, right? so I, I'm looking also at Dara Carlin's um, testimony because I could see, it seems to me that that like intentionally showing pornography to a kid should really be under the abuse of family household member or sex assault type statute instead of under indecent exposure. Because I, I could see the unintended consequence of all of these nude sunbathers, because there's one in my district, the only beach really on my district is, is considered by the community as a nude beach then being swept into all of a sudden as, as a misdemeanor when a kid decides to go to the nude beach. Yeah, I mean, as a prosecutor, I think if in that situation, personally, I wouldn't charge that because it's not, the person is not displaying their genitals in a manner likely to cause affront because, you know, like you said, they're just there, they're lying there. If a kid happens to walk by, it's not the person who's lying there nude that's displaying their genitals in that situation. Um, this is more for the same situation like it happens at Alamon all the time where you know some people they'll like <clears throat> drop their pants or they'll masturbate to children who are walking by and that's what this statute is more addressed towards and specifically to the like the situation where Mr. Bento was talking about somebody changing in the bathroom and a kid walks in that's that's never going to be a criminal offense and I can't imagine that that would follow this because this prosecutor is always going to look at is this like is this done in such a manner as it's likely to cause affront. Yeah. And so. Thank you. So may I ask more questions? This time of Mr. Bento. Let me ask a okay. Attorney General okay. question real quick first. Uh, so one of the testifiers did request that additional language be added to the bill to prohibit parents and guardians from showing pornography to their minor children. Yeah. Is there, can that already be charged somehow? Well, or is that, it, is that within the, uh, the cone of uh, the family, if you want to call it that? Yeah, I did respond to your office. I know your office sent an email asking about that this morning. And basically, um, the promoting pornography for minors is a separate section, so it's not really contained in this bill, but there is a specific carve out an exception for parents um, with their children. And okay. that's supported by, there's a commentary under the statutes, 712-1215, um, where that, um, there is an exception for parents for constitutional reasons. There's case law, it's federal case law that says that you can't charge a parent with showing pornography to their children. So that's okay. why that's carved out. Okay, all right, yeah. thank you. All right, go ahead, uh, Senator Sandwin. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, I want, oh, I want to hear from the public defender. So what, I didn't read this, the bill the same way the attorney general read the bill, but then I, have never, I haven't had to defend somebody. Um, do you agree with the attorney general that the state of mind is only as to the age and not as to, I, I'm thinking about the circumstance, nude beach, community knows it's a nude beach, kid shows up, police decides because somebody's complaining about the nude beach to sweep everybody and arrest everybody. Will they be all of a sudden be charged with a misdemeanor? Well, as Mr. Cook was saying, there's a lot of discretion with the actual charging deputy of the attorney general's office or of that prosecutor's office. Um, 
I, I've known Mr. Cook many years. I've worked with him for many years. So he's a reasonable guy, but there's, but, you know, as well but, as I you know, know, there's but, new prosecutors yes. who just want to convict. So that's what I'm getting at. Um, if you give the authority to do so, then somebody could choose to charge. Now, the issue is on the terms cause affront, cause affront. What does that really mean? It changes from each individual person and perhaps from each individual prosecutor. And so, as you were saying, people are on the beach, they bring a child there, the child sees someone naked, maybe what might be an affront to one person may not be an affront to somebody else. But the issue with the state of mind means that the person doesn't have to know that this child is under the age of 16, they're guilty. Um, or, or, that they, or would they know whether or not the, somebody would bring the kid there? That, there's, the there's, right, there's no way to litigate that because that's a given because uh, of, the, of the way the statute is written. And that's why I suggest that at least perhaps have a reckless state of mind where you know, the person consciously disregards the risk that this is, you know, someone under the age of 16, because it's obvious when some people are under the age of 16, the issue is or when somebody, somebody yeah. you know, might be a little bit older, closer to that age, and that could be an issue. But yeah. I think the yeah. whole purpose of the bill is to target those individuals that would expose themselves purposely yeah. to children. Yeah this casts a much wider net than going after those particular individuals. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other questions, members? Okay, if not, let's go ahead and move on to the next bill. Uh, HB 1980, relating to cruelty to animal. Animal cruelty establishes a separate offense and applicable penalties relating to fighting of birds in the first and second degree. First up on 1980 is Gary Abuta, Executive Director for Hawaii High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area. In support. Next is William Bento for Public Defender. Welcome back. Uh, good morning once again, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, William Bento, Public Defender's Office. On this particular bill, our office is just offering comments. Um, our, our suggestion is that there should be, this should be kept as a misdemeanor and elevated penalties for repeated offenses. Um, in no way do we condone this and we do believe that the legislature has the authority to ban this type of activity, clearly. Um, the associated issues that come with this we understand are problematic, but we also have laws that target things like gambling, possession of firearms, and things of that nature already. Uh, it's not to say that these types of activities draw that, and to have one or two examples where things may have happened doesn't mean that every single time this type of thing occurs, those other things happen. But we do believe that there needs to be a change in attitude within the community and you know this as i expressed in our written testimony is generational and so and <clears throat> a system by which a person is charged with a misdemeanor placed on probation given terms and conditions to understand uh perhaps what is really happening in this situation and help to change that attitude and elevated penalties for subsequent offenses we feel is a much better approach Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next up is Michael Vincent, Deputy, Direc Deputy Director for Administration for the Department of Law Enforcement. Uh, in support, next is Mike Lambert, Narcotics Vice Division for Honolulu Police Department on Zoom for all year. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Domingo Monog, Lieutenant. Narco of the Narcotics Vice Division, Hopeless Department, City and County of Maui. Um, HPD supports House Bill 1980, and we stand by our written testimony. Now, I'll stand by, sir, for questions. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, next is Brooks Bear for Honolulu Department of the Prosecuting Attorney. In support, next is Maui Prosecuting Attorney's Office, um, also in support. Next is Inga Gibson for Animal Welfare Institute. Thank <laughs> you. 
Good morning again. Good morning again, Chair, uh, committee members. Thank you. Uh, this bill is the product of months of um, communications input back and forth with uh, the prosecuting attorney's office across the state. I believe all of them have submitted written testimony. Kauai, I believe, uh, was late, but we do have the support of all the counties. Um, law enforcement, uh, we all agree that um, there needs to be an increase in penalties as it relates to cockfighting. The bill is modeled after our existing uh, dogfighting law, which I worked on um, with some of you back in 2010. Um, it proposes two um, levels of offenses. One would retain the misdemeanor for the lower offenses with increased penalties based on um, prior convictions. So that related to what the public defender said that is in the proposed bill. And then the felony only for the the most egregious of the offenses. So those would be um, people who are allowing children to attend these bloody spectacles. Um, children are often there. Um, and also for those who are doing the promoting, uh, the organizing, and those who are essentially um, continuing this by breeding, selling these animals explicitly for fighting purposes. Um, I believe the Maui County prosecutors did uh, propose a few amendments that we do support. Uh, we have no other additional amendments because this was a product of, of months and months of back and forth. We wanted to make sure that whatever was proposed was effective and was enforceable. Uh, we have one of the weakest cockfighting laws in the country. It is currently a misdemeanor, um, but I think um, the testimony that you've received in opposition speaks for itself why we need to increase the penalties because even if, with it being a misdemeanor, we have those that continue shamelessly to engage in this activity. Um, I did also wanna say that um, regardless of how you may feel about birds or about fowl in particular. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Uh, next Strong up is support. Stephanie Kendrick, Director of Community Engagement for the Hawaiian Humane Society. Still, yeah, there you are. Hello again. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, Committee Members, Stephanie Kendrick with the Hawaiian Humane Society. We're in strong support of this bill. Uh, the, the Public Defender's Office mentioned generational change. You can't have generational change when we have children who are being trained to believe that abusing animals is okay. Children who are witnessing these kinds of cool contests and think that that's a normal part of life and it's acceptable to watch birds to slash each other, other to death. Watching cruelty to animals is a proven predictor of violence in children. It's a predictor of conduct disorder. It's a predictor of committing violence later in life. Nearly half of school shooters have animal cruelty in their background. The fact that children are allowed to wish, witness this contest is getting in the way of the generational change that we need to reduce violence in our communities. We urge you to pass this measure and to keep violence out of our communities by preventing this activity. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Alec, Alex Kaea Pimentel for Tees Farm Supply LLC. In opposition, Kevin Cacho, testifying for Hawaii Game Breeders Association. In opposition, Anson Drew Hodges, for also for Hawaii Game Breeders Association, also in opposition. Uh, Marion Hussenbucks testifying for Animal Interfaith Alliance in Britain in support. Chantal Moniz for Hina's Legacy Rescue Foundation. In support, okay, thank you. Uh, Susan Ree, Hawaii State Director for the Humane Society of the United States. In support, Tiffany Kim for Fur Angel Foundation. In support. Okay, next we have Terry Combra. Come on up. Good morning. Hi. Unfortunately, um, I might have to use somebody else's two minutes. Uh, I oppose this just, bill. Just, just, you um, have two minutes. Yeah, yeah I oppose this bill. Um, I wanted to give my name, but you know, you might cite me for misdemeanor here. It's already a law. Now you want to make me a criminal, a felon for fighting a chicken. Okay, you say you're upping the penalty to deter people from participating in this activity. And this bill will not do that. Um, it'll just force it more underground. It'll make it more dangerous. Why not? Hey, I know, 
legalize it. Why not um, have it contribute to the economy here? You use all these buzzwords of um, illegal gambling, firearms, drugs, violence, endangerment of minors. And of course, you always bring up the shooting in Miley, which you know you, you now backtrack a little and say it was just at the uh, cockfight facility, um, but it didn't happen at the cockfights. Well, it didn't. And there's two sides to every story. And what you hear in the newspaper and what they print is not always correct, OK? Um, these things can happen at any event, any place. Um, not just it's a place that they fight chickens. People can gamble on anything. Hell, you know, it's a gamble to cross the street. It's a gamble to walk in Waikiki, you know. Um, shootings happens at schools, at churches. Uh, let's ban those places. And I could dispute each of these buzzwords, but I only have two minutes. Um, look around. You can't tell who we are. We're no different from you. We love our chickens. Each one is bred. Uh, it's different, it has its own beauty, its own traits, um, something we don't want to become extinct. You say this bill is not against raising birds, but that'll be next. What's next? You know, where do you draw the line? Where do I take a stand? Uh, my name is Terry Canberra, and I believe this bill will not achieve what you think it will. Okay? Um, you say I get ridiculous saying let's legalize it. Um, I say it's ridiculous okay. to try to make it a felony. Thank you very much. Next up is John Camera, the third. Followed by Fatima Abed. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman. I'm John Camera, the third. I, um, I, I raise chickens. I, I'm now a chicken fighter, but I raise roosted chickens to show. Um, I've, I'm 71 years old and I've had, I've had chickens for ever since I can remember. My dad had chickens, my, my grandfather had chickens. I, um, I'm a farmer and I feel that this, this bill is like a, like a, a snowball. This is gonna affect farmers later. It, it's gonna affect the rodeos. It's gonna affect the fishermen. This will all fall into place. Um, I, I just had a chicken show. I had two, over 200 people at the chicken show. Um, we had we had young young children. We had older children. We had we had uh, 60, 70 year old people there. This this is not a um, this is not a, a a place where we breed criminals. Okay, we we talking about criminals. It's it's society that that makes criminals. It's most of the crime is happening on, on the west side of the island. I don't live on that side. I live on the winter side. I don't, I don't remember the last time somebody shot somebody on the winter side of the island. I know a lot of people that raise chickens and not one of us are, are criminals. So I, I don't want to be characterized as a, as a criminal. And this knowingly, intentionally, and recklessly, somebody can be driving by your place and see you, you have a chicken out on a string in your front yard and they can call a police say no this guy's getting ready to fight roosters i i cannot see myself being um scrutinized by by someone a neighbor that doesn't like me so if um if this bill goes through it's going to put a lot of us out of out of business too because i buy a lot of feed i i support i support i buy material to build cages okay thank you thank very you. much thanks for coming down Thank you. Uh, next is Fatima Abed, followed by McKenna Cooley. Fatima Abed, uh, in support of McKenna Cooley. Uh, also in support. Next is Jonathan Smith, possibly on Zoom. Uh, no, they're unavailable on Zoom, Chair. Okay, in, in opposition. Uh, next is Scott Kidd. And, okay, so I'm going to read a bunch of names. If you're here and you want to testify, come on up, interrupt me. Um, Scott Kidd in support. Johnson Minnell in opposition. Rocky Farido in opposition. Chad, uh, no last name in opposition. Andrew Coelho in opposition. Lynn Madison in support. Timo Kayama in opposition. Justin, no last name in opposition. Roger Pavao in opposition. James. Monsa uh, in opposition, Dwayne Lum in opposition, 
Michael Ibanya is in opposition. Hang on just one second. Okay, um, so a whole bunch of other people um, signed up to testify. The solid, the vast, you know, I want to get you the numbers here. Because overall, there were 38 in support, 183 in opposition, and one comment. So I won't, I'm not going to read all the names, but if there's anybody else who would like to testify on HB 1980. Okay, let's start with the, okay, come on up. Morning. Morning. <clears throat> Well, morning, Council. Um, I want to talk about the positives about you know this persona. My name is Ron Damasio, <clears throat> grandpa. Why am I getting emotional? Grandpa, three grandchildren, two, four, and five. Father of three kids. I want you to listen to the positives of raising chickens. Every Sunday morning, my grandkids wait for me at ten o'clock with their lunch bags all packed, waiting on the porch for me to pick them up, collecting eggs, cleaning pens, feeding dogs raking leaves, cutting grass, scrubbing water cups, and feeding every bird. Though they don't do the job right and not very well, I want you to realize my kids and their kids raised on a farm, learning basic life necessities, learning respect, responsibility, productivity, all in one pace, just to learn how to be a hardworking person in society. I'm a business owner, a restaurant, an electrical contractor, a landlord here on Oahu, and I feed my farm every day. Every application I come across, learn that they have worked on a farm or a hobby. Almost 80% of them are hardworking kids or adults. Because of what older generations has passed down to us, old school respect and responsibility nowadays, this means nothing. Generation kids growing up playing video games 12 plus hours on a day, learning on their phone. Respect and responsibility and accountability, learning from Facebook, TikTok, and only fans. So I ask you not to attack basic family values passed down generation to generations. I want my, um, to think about my grandkids, Jayla, Drayson, Ryder, and my family. Spend time on the farm teaching them basic life learning skills. I remember my metal class teacher from Wapawa High School in the 80s telling me, not everybody's gonna be doctors and lawyers, but if you work hard enough, you can make just as much money. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see, we had a gentleman, oh, somebody else. Oh, you can come on up if, you, if, if, you weren't, if you're willing to wait. Go ahead. Morning. All right, my name is uh, Gary Kaino. All right. You know, I mean, I love my father. I mean, I'm real sensitive. My father always died, but when I was a young kid, he always used to bring me to his farm and, and raise chickens, you know. And, and then all too many years, I've been raising chickens for how many years? I'm 45 years old already. And as my daughter was growing up, you know, I decided to stop raising roosters because I love roosters. They bring back memories of my dad. You know, and it makes me a better person in doing other things in community. To raise a chicken, it takes a lot of responsibility, a lot of time, a lot of effort. You know, as my daughter got older into high school, I decided to quit chicken fight, uh, chicken, great chickens, you know. As I said, I need to spend time more with my daughter. But you know, as she graduated, I I I took in my family business. I went back to raising chickens and I brought her into raising chickens and stuff. You know, and chickens have bring my family closer, my daughter closer, and, and it reminds me of my dad, you know. But chickens bring happiness to my life. It brings peace. It just does comfort. We work hard. Like like Ron said, we go to the farm, we spend time, we stress out at work, we all stress. This is my yoga. I go to there, I feed my chickens, I relax kick back and look at them beautiful roosters you know and i go home i cook dinners and i got baby chicks at home i raise chicks at home too you know and it just brings my family close and i said this is part of our culture it's been for years i remember when i was a little kid going to game foul shows you know and taking this away I just I don't know where what am i doing you know what i'm gonna find next to do for in this life you know i, I love roosters and this is not me to come up here and share my testimony but if you guys take this away, it's not me. I'm a construction workers, we got electricians, we got all type of people come and enjoy game fall. And this is the lively thing in my hood. There's a lot of negative things that goes around in our life, but this is what keeps me insane. This is what keeps me out of raising my family. If I can raise a rooster from a baby chick 
to encourage all this again. I can take care of my family. It's the same responsibility as the family. There's a lot of positive things in raising roosters. And please, please do not pass this bill. That's all I ask. Thank you very much. Love you guys, thank you. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Come on up. Was, uh, was Shannon Matson waiting to testify on this bill or on a different one on Zoom? Yeah, she wanted to testify for this bill as okay. well. She'll be next in. Go ahead. Hello, Senator. Morning. Morning. My name is Jesse Kaimana Maiola Davis. I'm a former United States Coast Guard member. I oppose this bill. And I just want to say that my family, we weren't raised with Gamefall. I kind of got into it after my Coast Guard career. Um, but I've learned so much responsibility because I've started raising my own fall. And I got into it from my wife who brought chickens from off the street. I, I fell in love with the birds. The birds started following me around in my house. I fed them and then I started purchasing actual game fall. Um, this bill is gonna hurt a lot of people in our community. Feed stores that are hurt people's um, sanity, like like the previous person stated, he comes to the chick, he comes to his farm, and he finds Zen peace. That's his yoga. Um, with the amount of violence going on, cannot um, testify to that. You know, just today there was another shooting. You know what I mean? So pushing the felony on people who make up our community, who who build our roads, they build houses. These are all blue blue collar people. Don't make us felons. We're asking you, we're asking you not to make us felons. There's so much people that, you know what I mean, raise fall. My my son's first word was chicken. My son outside, he's sitting outside. His very first word was chicken. Out of all the words, not dad, not mom, chicken. He he loves his birds. He loves going to the farm. He asked me every day, are we going to the farm? This is gonna make felons out of people, blue collar people, people, entrepreneurs. Might have some people in suit and tie as you folks, you know, but don't do that to Thanks us. So much. Just by the way, I'm required to wear a suit during sessions, uh, so I don't really yeah. like wearing it that much. That's like one downside of this job. Uh, let's see, I think Shannon Matson was on uh, Zoom. Go ahead. Good morning again. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, Committee Members. My name is Shannon Matson, born and raised on Hawaii Island. Um, and I've actually been an owner of chickens and roosters my entire life. Um, more chickens than roosters, but over the years we have had roosters. And once you have a couple roosters, you end up with more and more and more. Um, I love my, my um, animals. Um, and sometimes I love the roosters most of all. They have incredible personalities. Um, I just wanted to say that I support HB 1980. Um, I also agree with the Hawaiian Humane Society's testimony and support. Um, I think that those who cause pain or kill animals must be held accountable. Um, I really am urging you guys to please protect those who don't have a voice to advocate for themselves. I know that this bill is meeting a lot of opposition, and I would just like to use the argument that, um, you know, Sometimes change is hard and sometimes change meets a great deal of opposition, but we used to allow smoking on planes. Uh, we used to support child labor. And when we tried to change those things, people fought against those things with the same arguments. You're taking away our rights. You're targeting our culture. You're taking away our ability to make money. And yet um, those things needed to pass and we needed to have a culture shift in those regards. And um, those who are testifying in opposition, um, I don't really believe that they are considering the full well-being of the animals, even though they might be good owners um, of those animals until the ultimately the animals are dying and being killed and tortured. Um, nothing in this bill will criminalize what I do in raising chickens and roosters. So anybody who is saying that is, is just not understanding the bill properly. Um, I think it's time for a change. So please put animal rights first. Mahalo. Okay, thank you. And uh, who's next? Come on up. Can somebody I can move the chair so you can get to the mic? Oh, okay, thank you. Good morning. 
Good morning. Can you pull my name is John? Can you pull the mic closer to people here? Closer? Just closer to mic. you. No, the mic, not not you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. My name is John Abraham. Good morning. I'm here this morning to say, you know, to me, it's appalling for everything that we hear about what's going on about the chicken. We're talking about violence of the chicken. But we look around today and everything we do is violence. We play football, violence. We play soccer, violence. We play race horsing, violence. Everything violence occurred. So what are we here for? We're here to correct violence. It's never gonna stop. I just came and moved from Florida. They changed the law in Florida that people couldn't raise chicken in the yard. I watched them haul off 200 something chicken and put it in a cage, a big trailer cage and watch them all fight. And I said, hey, what are you guys gonna do? We're gonna kill them. So I watched 200 something chicken, cocks, chicks and whatever, get totally slaughtered. Now, I'm thinking to myself, this is supposed to be animal protection. But I've watched them slaughter chickens. I watched them slaughter dogs. You ever been in a, you ever been in a slaughterhouse? You ever seen how a cow die? You ever been in a pig pen? You ever saw a pig die? Some people couldn't take it. I watched people fall and hit the ground. Because why? We have to eat. But the thing is, violence is all around us. What are we going to do? Nobody here can do anything about it. Nobody. So you're going to stop chicken fighting, make all the rules and everything, and what's going to happen? They're going to do it all over again. They did it in Florida. And you know what? If you check your rules, Florida had turned everything back over. Now they're fighting chickens again. Why? Because you have so much people who enjoy sports. They're not like 100,000 people sitting in Thank you very much. Thank you. Who's next? Come on up. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Nuilo Akane. I come out of Apua of Waiholi Valley. I am uh, come from the Royal Lines. So we believe that the chicken is our is the haka fight, the moa, the fighting chicken. The crown of Kamehameha is from the chicken. So our culture goes back deep, goes all the way back to when we first came on our double haw canoe. We bring it with us. It's still here with us today. I have eight children, and every day from four in the morning to dark, my children will hatch eggs. They're like little veterinarians. They they know how to produce their own food from it. You know how to harvest the feathers to make our capes, to make our crowns. It's a cultural app. There's laws put for it to protect our culture. Now, if you break the law, you're penalized. So are you going to be penalized for passing this bill by breaking our cultural laws that's put for it to protect us? That has to be considered. You put that law there to protect us, not protect us. Now, let us come up. Stop putting us in the basement underground, hiding like we're a bunch of felons. We're not. We're people of Daina. How many of you understand me? How many of you need to be invited into our life so you can see the whole life that we are? Don't just put a law and look at it like, oh, illegal, illegal cruelty to the animal. We love our hakamors. It's mana to us. It's, it's us. There was just a stabbing and a killing. Should we ban kitchen knives? Should we cut out chiropractors? That's the understanding. There's a shooting at, at a concert. Should we cut, shut down all the concerts? No. We need to bring it up so that we can bring the police officers in so they can do the monitoring of weapons. We're not for the weapons, but we for the Hakka Moors. It's cultural, it's our practice. It's been here, it's in our DNA of all our people. This is the gathering island. We need to have this festival. We need to bring it up. Stop depressing and genociding our people. It's genocide. You have to understand that this is our culture and it's been this way for generations. Abraham Lincoln was called Honest Abe, he was the referee. So there's a lot of things happening out there, and I ask you guys, Thank don't you break much. the law and who would keep like it, to keep our culture. Testify next. Thank you. Thank you. Who would like to testify next? Well, it's two. Yeah, come on up. I got Neil Abercrombie to speak in less than two minutes, so I haven't changed the rule for anybody. Thank you. Morning, Good morning. everybody. <clears throat> My name is Gino Joseph, and 
I have been raising this game fowl for over 40 years. I have two daughters that were side by side with me on my farm. <clears throat> my two daughters are, one is living in the mainland. She is a school teacher and now teaches at the university in California that teaches teachers how to do curriculum for younger teachers coming up. My second girl raised with these game chickens. She's studying right now college to be a veterinarian assistant. She loves animals, loves chickens. We are not bad people. Let me tell you, crime oftentimes starts from a lot of these laws that you folks prefer, um, try to push forward because people feel more pushed in a corner, more rights taken away. They have nowhere to turn and then snap. And we have these ugly situations. You have to look at how you treat people to make the good come out of them. If you always treat bad, what are you gonna expect? You send them to jail. How many repeat offenders comes out of prison? Very large number of them. Is that the answer? Throw in a cage, lock up the key, uh, throw in the key. What do you expect him to come out of prison being? We hope it's change. Oftentimes it's not. So we have to look at all avenues and what is the right thing for our society? How can we keep violence down? We all agree we don't want violence. We are not violent. I'm afraid if this law passes, my home can be raided. Thank you very much. At any time. Who would, like, who would like to go next? Thank Sorry. you. No, thank you. Come on up. Come on up. Good morning. Good morning, guys. My name is uh, Douglas Jerome. I'm from uh, Kailua. <laughs> I know Kailua, but I live in uh, Kahalu now. I just wanted to make a few points. Um, um, just yesterday, um, my Instagram, a father called me, um, gave me his number. I called him back. Um, so his son got into chicken. She's 14 years old. He was a pitcher for the 22 Little League that they won the Little League. He was a pitcher, the son. He asked me if they can come to my place and I can take the son under his wing to show him our culture. He like learn, you know what I mean? He like learn and everything we do. He understand what we do. He, he likes everything. So my point is, this is our culture. This is a tradition that has been passed down from I don't know, hundreds of years. And it's, it's flourishing right now. It's at the highest point to regular people. Like everybody's saying we're all regular people. That's true. But my point is, we, it's not bad what we do. It's just our culture. It's what we've been passed down to us. And we stay in our own lane. And we do what we do. We don't bother anybody else's culture, anybody else's whatever they do. We, we, we are who we are. And there's only one small fraction of people. There's everybody bring out oh, showing the kids badge. If it was that bad, why, why would they come to us and, and, and to perpetuate what we do? And this is people, like you said, the, the son is 14. They just won the little league. So, so, so they know we're not bad people. I'm just here to say we're not bad people. This is our culture and that's all we practice. And we love that. I'm 100%. I don't have a job. This is my job. Everybody know that. I solely depend on our culture and on our chicken raising and everything. I can go on and on, but I'm just saying this is our culture. Just respect us and, and, and that's all I got to say. All right. You, Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to testify on HB 1980? 1980. Going why up? Come on up. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Rance Miona. I'm a combat, a disabled combat Marine veteran. And I grew up raising chicken against my father's will. But when I came of age, I joined the Marines. So spent 20 years plus. And when I got out, 
had all these issues, what happened to me. And the one thing I found out was I needed therapy. So I looked back and I said, you know, my good time was raising chickens. So I started raising chickens. And I raised them on the big island for about 30 years. Until some neighbors didn't like my chickens. I, I was raising them in an agriculture uh, division, Hawaiian Ocean View. And I had these people from the mainland moved in. And they didn't like the noise. So they called the Humane Society. They came on my property with no warrant, nothing. There was fencing all up and they just came in. What they didn't learn was that I had trail cans sent up. So when I came home, my chickens were missing and there was a note. I don't like that when professional people try to act like thieves. My chickens were, I did not fight them. I just raised them. That was my therapy from the VA. They allowed me to do that. I'm just saying, you cannot just criminalize people for doing something that they like, because you have professional people saying it's wrong. Animal cruelty. That's not animal cruelty. You know what is animal cruelty? When the violence comes from outside and start thinking about how to make money, just like how chickens are raised for eggs. You know what they do to the male chicks? Toss them on the side. A lot of them get put in there. Thanks okay. very much. Thanks for coming down. So think about it. Anyone else like to testify on HB 1980? 1980. Anyone on Zoom? No. Okay. Uh, members, questions? Uh, let's see. I probably have a couple here. Just a moment. You got a question, Chair? Oh, yeah. So go ahead. Uh, for sure HBD. Well, officer, can you yes, um, <clears throat> please explain why a felony is needed and the challenges with the current law only being a misdemeanor? Why do we need this? From where we're coming from, from our standpoint, you know, we believe that, you know, tougher penalties will deter um, associated crimes. We've been using the same um, um, current law right now, which is a misdemeanor. And for us, it's not going to deter it. Yeah. Change it into felony, that would be a start. It's, it's not going to take overnight, but it would be a start from our standpoint. We heard a lot of good testimonies down here from both sides, but for where we're coming from, we pretty much the last defense. What we do, we, we, we swore to protect everybody, humans and animals alike. But if you give us the tool to do our job, we continue doing our job for the safety and well-being for everybody. And for the upcoming law enforcers also, who will continue to do the same. We heard testimonies also that yes, they raise chickens. But if we, if we raise chickens for the goodness of the family, not for any kind of criminal activity, then you expect us to be right there to do our job. Okay. Also, also <clears throat> born and raised in the Philippines, I have families that raise chickens also, but we raise it in a proper way for food consumption. Because in the Philippines, I was born in a province. And yes, they fight chickens also down there and criminal activities definitely attract that, 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 um, those activities. So me now over here, sitting in front of you, doing what we, what we do to protect everybody, including animals. On behalf of HPD and the other law enforcement out there, we urge you to support this bill. So what I'm hearing you say, to clarify, is that HPD is protecting humans and animals. So for those who are raising chickens, not for fighting purposes, that's fine. Correct? What we're talking about in this bill here is if you're raising them to fight, 
chickens for fighting, then that's what we're talking about as a felony, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Other members, other questions? Uh, yes. Senator San Buenaventura, go ahead. Okay. Um, I think the question that there's a huge cultural divide, you can tell, okay, Correct. just from the testimony. Here. Correct. Um, there are people who have come who normally don't testify, but came all the way from Kahulu, Wainai, Big Island, because they really feel that their culture is being threatened. And I think the question is not the fighting part, it's the part about that it is a felony to one, recklessly allow, a, I mean, allows a fight between birds to occur on any property owned or controlled by the person. Correct. And the problem with that is that roosters fight. So are you gonna allow for, is that gonna be automatically a class C felony because under 711, that's what you're adding in, is that somebody is considered recklessly um, being a cruelty to animal if they allow a fight between birds to occur? If roosters just commonly fight? Roosters commonly fight, man, but if you put gaps on the loose roosters and all that, that I seriously enjoy each other, then that's a different story. Okay, I understand that. But that's not what this bill is. If we go into the part about uh, attaching a gap, I agree with you. But if we allow to just put in 711-A, just allowing a fight to occur and automatically having it a class C felony, that's kind of difficult to make people be felons just because they're raising roosters. For that one, we want everybody accountable, including the property owners, for allowing the fighting of birds to create serious bodily injury among themselves in their property. Okay, thank you. Other questions, members? Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for testifying. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next bill, which is. Thank you. Uh, HB 2058, relating to dangerous dogs, establishes requirements and penalties for owners of dangerous dogs. Uh, first up on 2058 is Kelsey Nagata or Brian Yee for the, for the Attorney General. Sorry. Sorry, uh, looking for Kelsey Nagata or Brian Yee for the Attorney General. Oh, they are here. Okay, Sorry, good. I couldn't hear from the back. Sorry about that. No, no, wasn't, no, it's wasn't fine. wasn't talking loud enough. Go ahead. Good morning. Okay. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Kelsey Nagata, Deputy Attorney General, providing comments on HB 2058HD1. Uh, the purposes of this bill are to, one, define what constitutes a dangerous dog, and two, establish requirements and penalties for owners of dangerous dogs. Uh, the current draft of this bill requires several clarifications that we have provided in our written testimony. Clarification of this bill would, um, bill wording, would not only add clarity, but would also reduce the risk of confusion for everyone involved in the enforcement and court processes. We would also like to highlight, because this is a single um, referral committee, that if this bill does become law as it, is, as it is currently written, it may not be possible to enforce all of its provisions, which would in turn defeat the purpose of the bill. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, William Bento for Office of Public Defender. Morning again. Good morning again, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. Uh, William Bento for the Public Defender's Office. Um, this is one of those rare occurrences where we probably agree with the Attorney General as outlined <laughs> in our testimony. We believe that there are numerous issues with the bill that should be addressed before uh, it is passed. Um, <clears throat> one of the things is, is the confusion that it, the bill would create between current city ordinances and uh, state statute. Uh, we've outlined a case, uh, State versus Modica, which would be uh, relevant to that type of inconsistency and that type of issue. We also feel that it's problematic that a police officer can make a determination, um, a probable cause determination about a dog being dangerous, yet there is no means by which that can be challenged. Um, currently, if a police officer feels there's probable cause, he can make an arrest. 
But then uh, upon charging in that particular case, the arrest and the finding of probable cause can be challenged in a court of law. Uh, this bill doesn't seem to allow that. So these are just some of the highlights that we've um, expressed in our written testimony. Um, the last thing I want to highlight, though, is that it calls for a mandatory jail term of a year. Now, we understand that this can be a serious issue if somebody purposefully has a dangerous dog that they may use as a weapon. But this bill doesn't just uh, highlight that or carve that out. Um, it doesn't really seem to limit it to that type of purpose. And so a mandatory jail term for a situation um, that falls under the statute could be overly excessive. Thank you, and I'll be available for questions. Great, thank you. Uh, next up is Sharon Hurd, Chair of Hawaii Department of Agriculture. With comments, next is Susan L.K. Leloy, uh, Council District 3, uh, County of Hawaii, in support. Next is Nehalani Parsons for Hawaii State Association of Counties, on Zoom maybe? I guess they're available on Zoom. <clears throat> Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Um, I'm actually Jen Kagiwata, council member from uh, Big Island. I'm going to I'm going to be speaking on behalf of HSAC today. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Um, good morning, and thank you all to chair and vice chair and the committee members. Um, as you know, HSAC, the Hawaii State Association of Counties, is an organization made up of all the county council members from the state. Uh, this year, we made let this a legislative priority, this this uh, bill and any bills like it, which is we really feel we have to um, protect our communities from dangerous dogs. So regardless of what their county policy is currently looks like, all the counties would like to see the state step up um, for greater public safety from dangerous dogs. Um, thank you so much. And uh, the rest I'll stand on our testimony. Great, thank you. Next is Rebecca Viegas, council member for Hawaii County Council. Also in support, uh, Keldon Wal Keldon Walgen, prosecuting attorney for Hawaii County. In support, Jen Kagiwara. Oh, we just got you, you just you just spoke. Thank you, uh, Stephanie Kendrick, director of community engagement for Hawaii Hawaiian Humane Society. Good morning again. Chair, Vice Chair, Committee Member Stephanie Kendrick with the Hawaiian Humane Society. Um, in the interest of time, we will stand on our testimony and support. I just wanted to point out that we are happy to work with the Attorney General's Office um, on any amendments that will make this bill more effective. Uh, we do want to point out that there seems to be uh, uh, maybe a little bit of lack of understanding about how animal welfare laws are enforced statewide, which is in three out of four cases by county contractors, not by um, the counties themselves, so that needs to be reflected in the language of the bill, um, but we can work on ways to do that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Next is Marion uh, Hussenbucks, testifying for Animal Interfaith Alliance in Britain in support. John Bickle, President of Americans for Democratic Action in support. Chantal Moniz, Hina's Legacy Rescue Foundation in support. Bill M. Guidry, JD, Director of American Kennel Society and Kennel Club in opposition. Okay, next is Timothy J. Rowan for Malama Okuna in support. Next is Richard Collins in support. Next is Tereso, Teresa Tico in support on Zoom, maybe? They're unavailable on Zoom. Okay, in support. Um, let's see, who else we got that's actually signed up? I think Shannon, Shannon Matson. Shannon Matson, are you still there? On Zoom. Yes, thank you, Chair. Sorry. Go ahead. Technical difficulties. Um, hi, this is Shannon Matson again from um, Hawaii Island. Thank you so much, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee members. Um, I really wanted to thank everybody who has helped uh, move this bill along so quickly. Uh, it has been about eight months since my father was killed by dogs in Ocean View. And um, it feels like a really long time to have gone without any sort of penalties or accountability for these dog owners. 
But I feel like in the state for legislation to move this quickly is a really short time. So I'm grateful for how quickly um, and seriously everybody is taking this issue and trying to address it in a meaningful way. Um, this bill will not benefit our family directly, um, but we do want to see our community safer and we want to see people in the future uh, be able to get justice that they deserve for their family members if they're facing similar situation. Um, I wanted to respond to a couple things. First is the state attorney general's testimony. I just read it. I agree with it. Um, please make those amendments. Um, be consistent with the definition. And um, while I do appreciate how quickly this bill is moving, I want to make sure it's done the right way and it is enforceable. Um, because so far we have found that the current laws are not enforceable. Um, I strongly disagree with the state public defender's written testimony. Um, as they further explained in the finance committee in the House, um, the state bill would supersede all county laws, which is why it's important we get it right and we are consistent across the counties. Um, finally, we are asking for um, the option of a Class B felony, uh, and we really want to make sure um, that everybody here understands that none of this removes the court's discretion to impose lesser alternatives. Um, if there's a stronger, harsher option, that will increase incentives for restorative justice, which is what our family truly wants, and that's what we would like to see. Um, I also disagree with how they classify negligent homicide. Um, they say it's, okay. sorry, my time is out. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, members and uh, rest of the audience, so we're running out of time. So on this bill, HB 2058, we are going to defer the rest of the testimony until um, Tuesday, March 21 at 10 a.m. in this room, 016. And members, if otherwise I'm ready to make recommendations for the bills uh, above this on the agenda, if that's okay. 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 Uh, first up is uh, HB 1541. Hang on just a second. Let me find it. Okay, HB 1541 was related to Suicide Prevention and Awareness Month that um, we passed a bill a couple of years ago that established the Suicide Prevention and Awareness Month, but it went into a, it's going to go into effect in 2050. So this makes it go into effect in, um, in this year, July 1, 2024. So it's really housekeeping, fixing a mistake. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair for the vote. On HB 15, yes, sorry. 41. Sorry, Andrew. as it is. Uh, recommendation is to pass as is. Chair Rhodes. Aye. Vice Chair Rhodes, aye. Senator Alifante. Aye. Senator San Buenaventura. Aye. Senator Owa. Aye. Measure passes. Well, thank you. Uh, next up is uh, HB 1580, amends the criminal penalties for various cruel animal cruelty offenses. Um, not everyone's going to be happy with my recommendation, but I'm, I'm going to apply the increased penalties for second offenses only. So the, the current statute would stand, and but then the second offense would be bumped up. Uh, the bill the bill has bump ups for a whole bunch of them, and the bump up wouldn't occur until the <laughs> second offense. All except for cruelty to animals two. In that case, we'll accept the AG's amendment to make it a class B felony under cruelty, cruelty to animals two if the offense involves the death of an animal, not just a pet, or involve 10 or more animals in any one instance. And I'd also like to make it effective upon approval. Questions or concerns? Uh, yes. Senator Um, uh, I, I appreciate the amendments. I, are you also going to accept the AG's proposed amendment to remove the um, and subject to a fine not exceeding whatever the amount is because it, they can just leave it as either a class C or misdemeanor. Um, I don't remember whether the... That was in the first page. It, I think it changes it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, but if you're talking about the one, the, the main one in their, um, in their testimony, Cruelty to animals in the second degree is a misdemeanor, except, et cetera, et cetera. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, looking at page, 
page, the bottom of page one of their testimony of their testimony yes one. basically they yeah. it just, well, it just gonna, leaves it I'll, as is subject to i was going to accept i was going to accept that amendment okay so, thank you okay other questions on uh hb 1580 if not senator gabbard for the vote chair's recommendation is to pass hb 1580 with amendments to the members present are there any no votes or reservations no and the no vote for senator Wah, the measure passes Okay, thank you. Next up is uh, HB 1879 relating to digital voter information guide. A recommendation on that one is to um, make it effective upon approval. So with amendments, but just to make it effective upon approval. Questions or concerns? Uh, seeing none, Vice Chair. Recommendation on HB 1879 passed with amendments. Of the members present, any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Okay, next up is HB 1880. Uh, thank you. Uh, this reschedules the post election assembly of presidential electors to the first Tuesday after the second Wednesday in December. Uh, this was is a conformity to a change in federal law, so recommendations to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Gabbard. On HB 1880, to pass as is, are there any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Okay, thank you. Next up is HB 1884. This clarifies disclosures required for members of the legislature. Uh, still gathering some information on this, so we'd like to, I'm going to defer it until March 21, which is Tuesday at 10 a.m. I'm sorry, is that Tuesday or Thursday? Tuesday, okay. Tuesday, March 21. Sorry, 10 sorry. Thursday. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's, let's do this to the 19th at 10 a.m. And that other one that I deferred, uh, 10, 2058, let's do that to Tuesday at 10 a.m. as well, March 19. Is that legal? I guess it's okay, we're still here. Okay. Everything that I defer today will be to March 19, 10 a.m. in this room. Okay, next is uh, HB 1927 relating to indecent exposure raises the criminal penalty for the offense of indec indecent exposure from a petty misdemeanor to a misdemeanor if the victim is less than 16 years of age. Uh, the recommendation on this one is to, in the new subsection relating to persons under 16 years of age, we'll change the reference to victim to the following. For the first reference, use the person to whom the genitals were exposed. For sub subsequent references, use the person exposed. Specify that the person was less than 16 years of age at the time of the offense. Clarify the tenses used in the statute, make them consistency, and we'll also change the wording to, um, it, it's also just a consistency thing, a technical amendments, and we'll make it effective upon approval. Questions or concerns? Uh, yes. Yeah, so Senator San Buenaventura. It, it sounds like that you're going to keep the strict liability language and the, not adopt the recklessly. For the attendant circumstance of the age, yes. Okay. Other concerns? If not, Senator Gabbard. The recommendation is to pass HB 1927 with amendments. Members present, any no votes or reservations? Reservations. Reservations for Senator San Buenaventura. The measure passes. Okay, next up is HB 1980 relating to animal cruelty establishes a separate offense and applicable penalties relating to fighting of birds in the first and second degree. Uh, as testimony indicated, it's already illegal to fight birds. This bill would make it, um, would raise the penalties and make it more specific to bird fighting. So recommendations to pass with amendments in the first degree offense, make it a class C for the first four birds. And we won't, it won't be a separate Penalty, it won't be a separate offense for each bird fought. So the first four is a class C, and then for five or more, it will be a class B. And again, it won't be for each bird. It will just be five or more. And then in the second degree, uh, we'll make it so you can't charge for each bird and device separately. Convictions will be, and then the convictions will be for the separate, separate incidents on separate days because the penalties increase. And so we need to define uh, which uh, instances are counted or not. And then we'll also put in, um, there's a couple of places where the, a, a petty misdemeanor is described, but it doesn't actually call it a petty misdemeanor and same with misdemeanor. So we're just going to call them misdemeanors and petty, um, pet, petty misdemeanors and misdemeanors. And we'll put a different defective date on it, April 14, 2024. Questions, concerns? Yep. 
I'm sorry, did I say 20? I'm sorry, 2112. April 14, 2112. Thank you for the catch. Okay. Questions? No, seeing none. Uh, Senator Gabriel for the vote. Recommendations to pass HB 1980 with amendments. Are the members present? Are there any no votes or reservations? No. Reservations. No. Reservations for Senator San Buenaventura and a no vote for Senator Awa. Measure passes. Thank you. Next up is HB 2058 relating to dangerous dogs. This one, I believe, I've already deferred until April, I mean, sorry, April, March 19, 10 a.m. in this room. Uh, 016, I guess that's Tuesday. Uh, next is HB 2184 relating to campaign finance. Um, this one I will also defer until April, sorry, got April on my mind here. March 19, 10 a.m. in this room, 016. And that is it, I believe. We already voted on claims against the state. Is that right? Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, well, we, on, the, on the 2058, the one on dogs, we didn't get through all the testimonies, so we'll continue the hearing then and then vote on it as well that day, hopefully. I believe that's it. Okay, thank you very much. We're adjourned. Thanks for being here.